I first started writing what I called the book about books, it was really about the young female writer, um, you know, struggling with a, a marketplace that was sort of inhospitable to her. Uh, but you know, that <laughs> that isn't necessarily the greatest novel in the world. Um, and you know, as I would think about it over the years, eventually I decided it would be a much better story if the angle at which I came upon this trauma was the bookseller, as opposed to this very narcissistic angle of the young lady writer. <laughs> I think that when I write books about what I'm thinking about at the time, about questions I want to answer, when those questions overlap with questions that other people also seem to be having en masse, you know, for instance, like, you know, what, what do books, why do bookstores matter, you know, this kind of thing, um, uh, then I think it's more likely to be popular because maybe that's what, you know, the zeitgeist is, you know, to, to do the ugly thing of speculating about one's own success. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but I, I, you know, but I do think that when when my interests and they don't always overlap with people's interests in general, then my books have tended to do better. Um, but no, uh, I didn't really do any particular research, except that I will say there are a lot of booksellers that keep really great and detailed blogs, both of their reading life and their store lives. So I remember there was a great like angry blog when borders closed that <laughs> proved a wealth of information for like really untapped bookseller outrage about, <laughs> about things because they knew it was like the last days of borders, you know. So these people, it was like the last days of Rome or something, you know. <laughs>